So October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We have Jane Langbin, who's the CEO of uh, Genesis Women's Shelter, joining us from here on the Carol D. Zoom Room. You know, you're partnering with the Galleria Dallas to create awareness to take steps towards ending the epidemic. What is so alarming about the statistics of domestic violence here in Texas? You know, I think people think that domestic violence happens in another part of town, that it happens to a certain socioeconomic class. It happens to unemployed or somehow people who don't look like me. But what we know is that national numbers say that one out of every four women will experience domestic violence uh, uh, at the hands of a husband or partner. Um, What is so even more startling is the fact that uh, in Texas, it's one out of every three. So we are at higher risk living in Texas than living elsewhere in the country. I know in the beginning of the pandemic, when we had those shelter in place mandates, domestic violence spiked significantly across the nation. How has the pandemic continued to be a challenge for women who are in need of help? Right. It did spike. uh, But interestingly enough, when it did, when it was shelter at home and quarantine at home, we did not see an increase in our hotline numbers because it's very difficult to make a call for help if he is quarantined, your abuser is quarantined in the same house with you. And so it was very, very difficult. Uh, We know that in addition to, um, you know, all of us being uncomfortable and afraid and nervous about the pandemic, uh, those living in a home where there is domestic violence were actually threatened. It became a choice of weapon, uh, the COVID did. So he wouldn't let her go to the grocery store with a mask on, or he made her wash her hands until they bled. Um, There were just different ways, a different way to control, a different choice of weapon, as I say. As COVID has ebbed and flowed through the la- throughout the last 18 months, we have seen that as well. Once it sort of eased up, the floodgates opened and our shelters have been full, our hotlines have been ringing off the wall. Um, and we've even added a text line to help support those people who, again, may be not in a place where they can call, but could text uh, while maybe he's a shower, in the shower or asleep or something. But COVID has had a tremendous impact on survivors of domestic violence, much like it's had a tremendous impact on the rest of us. Now, we only get one month uh, for a specific designation of awareness, but this is something we should be aware of all year long, every single day. Absolutely. For a woman living in domestic violence, every month Mm -hmm. is domestic violence awareness month. Every day is, uh, but, but we appreciate uh, October and we try to work with our community partners to help raise the awareness, much like you're doing today. So thank you for this time. And um, yeah, it's a busy month. So with your partnership with the Gallery of Dallas, what will visitors who go to the mall there see for themselves and what will they learn? Oh my gosh, we are so excited about this partnership with uh, the Galleria who has donated space to us and it is very high traffic space. You'll, when uh, visitors to the Galleria go out there, they will see a 50 foot long, 12 foot high, poster basically uh, on level one right across from the Apple store. And there's so much information on that wall. Uh, The statistics, the one out of every three, uh, more women will present to the emergency rooms as a direct result of family violence than those who go as a result of rapes and car wrecks and muggings combined. It talks about the fact that it's not just physical. So many people think, okay, it happens to somebody else and it's a black eye or it's a split lip. But we know that there's so many times types of abuse, whether it be spiritual, financial, emotional, verbal, uh, and as I mentioned, you know, maybe even throw in COVID. Uh, So many women feel like perhaps because he doesn't hit me, he doesn't hurt me. But we know at Genesis that um, emotional and verbal abuse can be as deadly. And certainly what happens with emotional and verbal abuse, it raises that next generation of perpetrators and survivors. Um, so it's on the job training for children in that home. That will all, The board will also show 
about the cycle of violence, that it doesn't happen all the time, but it, it um, eb, you know, again, it ebbs and flows. There are periods of calm and then explosion and then calm. Um, but we also know that that is a cycle. It will happen again and again and again, and it will become more often and more severe. Also, a big portion of that wall talks about Genesis as a resource. It talks about our wraparound services, shelter and transitional housing and non-residential services, access to civil legal representation, children's programming, uh, a trauma center. It just goes on and on, school on site, preschool on site. Um, so we're excited about that. Kristen, one of my favorite parts of that wall, though, I have to tell yeah. you, down at the bottom, right near those resources is a QR code. I'm going like this, but I think it's probably like the, just big. Um, and it's a way to scan and support. Genesis does not receive government funds. And so if you or someone you know needs help or have needed it in the past, uh, not only can you get in touch with us through that scan, go on our website, but also, you know, write a, write a check. That's how old I am. Uh, send in a uh, credit card number and make it make it okay for somebody else. If you are blessed, if you truly are blessed and we're not one of those one out of every three, then I feel like, particularly as women, that we owe it to pay that forward, to pass that for, uh, pass that on. Um, one of the most exciting parts for me in on that huge wall uh, talks about our HEROES program. Um, HEROES stands for uh, he respects others. It's an auxiliary of men, uh, about 200 of them, who um, are, are friends of Genesis. They are role models for our children. They come down and they grill every week and serve dinner to the families and shoot baskets with the kids. But what they are saying is that domestic violence is not okay. They have a stance of zero tolerance. I'm not going to do it in my house, but you know what? It's not okay with me if it happens in your house. And so we're so proud of our heroes. There are ways to get involved. There are ways to, um, you know, find out more information about the heroes. Another little QR code that'll take you into a link. Um, I'm I'm talking way over my head right now, but uh, that's what that's how I understand it happening. Um, but anyway, we're very very grateful to the Galleria for helping helping us. This is something we couldn't have afforded. This is exposure. And at the end of the day, I know there's going to be someone who walks by and said, that's me that Wallace is talking about. And today is the day I get help. And so um, thank you for raising awareness about it. We hope everyone will go out and see it. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be great. Absolutely. Jane, can I ask you this question? If people I actually have two questions, you know, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an era right now where information is so easily accessible, are there people who still just don't get it? Uh, oh, abso oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think if you think it happens to someone else, if you think if your questions are, why doesn't she just get out instead of why did he do it? That tells me you don't get it. Um, you know, so many people say, well, I never understood why my mom wouldn't leave or my sister wouldn't leave that guy. Uh, we understand it at Genesis. It, it is a, it is a, it is not an easy choice. It is not a safe choice, but when you are walking beside experts like Genesis Women's Shelter and Support, Absolutely, it happens every single day. But so many people think, again, this is a demographic other than mine, and maybe that just feels better or safer. But um, everybody, in my opinion, this, is at, this has killed more people than COVID. This impacts more people than COVID. And we talk about it again as an equal opportunity epidemic. And, but if each of us did what we could with what we had, um, it, we could absolutely stop this. We have to have zero tolerance. We have to hold accountable perpetrators and not just place the cure on the person who is being impacted by domestic violence. Absolutely. I mean, it seems like a generational issue. This is a community issue, you know, and it, it also has an economic impact if these women, you know, choose to call out from work or they can't go to work or they're not financially secure. I mean, it's an economic toll, you know, for the entire community. 
I am so glad you brought that up. In corporate America, approximately $8 billion are lost as a result of domestic violence, lost productivity, absenteeism, turnover. And as far as the family unit, um, the, the compensatory power that an abuser might have over a woman. I could be a corporate lawyer. I could be a doctor, but my entire salary goes straight into his bank account. Uh, uh, not mine, but uh, an abuser's bank account. Um, and women who have not been allowed to understand finances, not been allowed to participate in those finances, uh, even even the money, we use the example, even the money that my mom sent me at Christmas that I hide under in the cereal box at the bottom of the cereal box, he'll find it, he'll take it. And I have I have no financial resources whatsoever. So, yeah, it's pretty powerful. Uh, again, more effective than a lock and a key. So not only does it take a toll on that family, it takes a toll on corporate America. Uh, this can't be called a private matter. It, because battered women are working women, it goes to work and he doesn't stop abusing when she pulls out of the driveway, right? Uh, there's a lot of sabotage of jobs. Maybe he comes up often. He, um, you know, tracks her while she's at work. Um, yeah, it's really, there's a definite uh, toll financially on the on this country. Um, it's uh, not, a lot of people think this is a woman's issue. This is a human issue. It's a health issue. Imagine the cost of uh, these assaults and these sexual assaults and these brutal beatings and these homicides, what that costs our community. Let's stop it before it starts. Let's just stop it before it starts. And I think what the gallery is doing, I have high hopes that as, as I say, somebody's going to see that, pass it to a coworker, pass that QR code to someone who needs the help. 